Welcome back, clinical problem solvers. It's Prof Rez, a clinician in Chicago who loves learning and teaching medicine. This channel is dedicated to understanding medicine and is for your education. Today's topic, the foot drop. I used to be nervous and lack an approach to the foot drop, but our great neurology friend, Aaron, has taught me an approach that I'd like to share with you. If you stay tuned for the next five to 10 minutes, you too will have a systematic approach to the foot drop. Why does foot drop occur? It occurs due to dorsiflexion weakness. I'm gonna change the angle of the camera so I can show you the various movements of the foot. In order to localize a site of pathology that leads to foot drop, we first need to learn the four possible directions the foot moves. So toes to the nose equals dorsiflexion. If you push down on the gas pedal, that equals plantar flexion. If you move inward, that equals inversion. If you move outward or exit, that equals eversion. So dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and eversion. What you'll realize is that when you're coming down with your foot, you land on your heel and you're dorsiflexing. What happens if you can't dorsiflect? So when you get when you rise, you can't land on the heel, so then your foot slaps down. This is referred to as a steppage gait. All right, now that you understand the various direction the foot can move and the terminology, we can talk about the nerves that are responsible for the movement of the foot. We need to understand normal before we can understand abnormal or foot drop. And the primary nerves responsible for foot movement would be the L5 nerve root. And note, contributions from L4 through S3 make up the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve can be thought of having two bundles, the common peroneal nerve, which is on the lateral aspect and which courses through the fibular head, also known as the common fibular nerve, and the tibial nerve. So let's talk about each of these nerves and their motor action as it, was, as it relates to foot drop. So let's start with the tibial nerve. The tibial nerve motor action includes inversion, meaning inward movement of the foot, and plantar flexion, pushing down on the gas pedal. Note, this makes a mnemonic tip. It's useful to have some of these mnemonics because it can get confusing. But notice how the tibial nerve is not involved in dorsiflexion, toes to the nose. Therefore, pathology of the tibial nerve does not result in foot drop, but we need to understand the motor movements of the tibial nerve to be able to localize the site of pathology at L5, the, the sciatic nerve, or the common peroneal nerve. The common peroneal nerve is responsible for eversion or outward movement of the foot and dorsiflexion. We remember this with the mnemonic PED, P-E-D. So peroneal, common peroneal, eversion, dorsiflexion. The sciatic nerve, of course, we just said the sciatic nerve is made of two bundles, the common peroneal and the tibial. So the sciatic nerve would be tibial's inversion and plantar flexion, while common peroneal is eversion and dorsiflexion. So someone, if they have complete sciatic neuropathy, they won't be able to invert the foot, evert the foot, plantar flex the foot, or dorsiflex the foot. So this is a, a flail foot, but most of the times it's partial sciatic neuropathy, specifically pathology of the peroneal nerve. I have this plus one, it's almost like a basketball player who gets fouled and scores a bucket because the sciatic nerve is not only responsible for inversion, plantar flexion, eversion, dorsiflexion. Imagine it's going right behind the thigh. So it's also responsible for knee flexion. So knee flexion. So you can imagine someone with sciatic neuropathy may also have impaired knee flexion. L5, so you would think that L5 should just be like the sciatic neuropathy, but it isn't, and this is why. So L5, I'm gonna tell you what it results in. 
It results in impaired inversion, eversion, and dorsiflexion. This mnemonic we like to think of lied. Like Reza lied to his partner that he exercised today. We know the tibial nerve is involved in plantar flexion, but the component of the tibial nerve that's responsible, responsible for plantar flexion or pushing down on the gas pedal is derived from nerve root S1 and S2, not L5. That's why an L5 radiculopathy does not result in impaired plantar flexion. The L5 nerve root is also um, an important contributor to hip abduction. So when you get into a car and how you abduct your hip. So right away, just looking at the motor um, effects of each of these nerves, we see some differences that if someone has a foot drop with impaired knee flexion, we can localize to a sciatic neuropathy. If someone has a foot drop with impaired hip abduction, but normal plantar flexion, we can localize to an L5 radiculopathy. All right, now that you understand normal, we can discuss abnormal and a prioritized DDX. We love base rate of disease and the most common cause of dorsiflexion weakness or foot drop is common peroneal neuropathy. What are the motor deficits that you expect? Click pause, tell me what are the motor deficits? It's gonna be inability for eversion and dorsiflexion. Remember our mnemonic, PEED. The sensory deficits are gonna be paresthesias and numbness in the lateral calf and the dorsum of the foot. The differential diagnosis, which is gonna be a common theme, is gonna be compression at the fibular head. And remember, we started this talk about saying how a cross leg can lead to numbness so basically, if your legs are crossed for too long, and this is, it's the leg on top because that's where the nerve is going through the fibular head. Or if you have trauma to the knee, that can also result in common peroneal neuropathy. Let's now discuss this sciatic neuropathy. For sciatic neuropathy, what are the motor deficits? Well, we know it's, peroneal, which means eversion and dorsiflexion, much more common than the tibial inversion and plantar flexion. And we also know the sciatic nerve is an and one nerve. So it's involved in knee flexion. So all of these may be impaired. The sensory is very similar to the common peroneal, the lateral calf, the dorsum of the foot, but also can involve the plantar aspect of the foot. What's the differential diagnosis? Well, it can be from compression. So this is why when you sit on the toilet for too long, you, your leg starts to fall asleep and you may have a foot drop. That's due to a sciatic neuropathy. Because think about it, when you're sitting on the toilet, you're putting pressure right on the sciatic nerve. Another common reason for sciatic neuropathy in the hospital is due to intragluteal injection. So that's a form of trauma. Let's go and talk about L5 radiculopathy. Press pause, what are the motor symptoms? Well, lied. So impaired inversion, eversion, and dorsiflexion with impaired hip abduction, maybe impaired hip abduction, though normal plantar flexion. The sensory deficits, in addition to the lateral calf and the dorsum of the foot, like all radiculopathies, causes pain. So you also have pain in addition to the paresthesias and the numbness. The differential diagnosis is lumbar degenerative disc disease. We'll just put degenerative disc disease. Um, I put in other category here. Why? Because of course, at the end of the day, these nerves have to get their motor message from the brain. So if you had a strategic brain lesion involving the area of the premotor cortex responsible for foot movement, you can have a foot drop. But these patients will also have upper motor neuron signs and the foot drop 
it's unlikely to be the sole manifestation, meaning you're going to have weakness that's more proximal to the foot drop. This could be like a tumor, an abscess. ALS might manifest with the foot drop, um, but these patients have upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron symptoms. Um, and then finally, some less common causes of foot drop that affect uh, various parts of the nerve include vasculitis and Charcot-Marie tooth, which can result in bilateral foot drop. Go back and watch our approach to peripheral neuropathy. To summarize, that's our approach to foot drop, most commonly due to common peroneal neuropathy, but on the differential diagnosis includes sciatic neuropathy and L5 radiculopathy, and rarely a strategic brain lesion, ALS, vasculitis, and Charcot-Mary tooth. And we talked about a few mnemonics to be able to distinguish and localize the site of pathology. Because once you localize the site of pathology, then you can prioritize a DDX. So if you localize it to the common peroneal nerve, you know that maybe there's compression at the fibular head or there's been trauma to the knee. If you localize it at the sciatic nerve, because the patient has impaired knee flexion in addition to foot drop, then maybe you have compression from being uh, in, in a patient who's bed bound or someone who's been sitting in a chair for too long. Let's say you have impaired hip abduction and a foot drop. Then you're most concerned with L5 radiculopathy, but those patients often complain of pain, not only paresthesias and numbness. Well, we hope you are enjoying our videos to end neurophobia. Thank you so much. Aaron also wishes all of you a happy holidays.